Yo, people, what's going on? Thanks for coming back to another episode of Aura Audio, and welcome to Building a Drum Sampler with AudioKit version 5, part 2. Now, today we're going to take a look at something called the conductor. Yes, like literally a conductor of music. Well, I guess in this case it's the code, but I'm thinking that's the reference to it because I see in all these audio kit examples that there's a usually a conductor, which is kind of the leader of the whole app, kind of what goes on behind the scenes with all the audio stuff. But I thought since I'm an, since I'm a musician, that's probably a reference to conducting. But anyway, we're going to be taking a look at this drums conductor class which you'll notice it's different from the last video. Go check that out. Link will be below if you haven't seen it. But this is different from a struct because it's a class. And classes are just different type of structures with more kind of advanced capabilities. And we also talked about referencing versus copying. So classes can be referenced by multiple other things. In this class, you'll notice that it conforms to this protocol. So what the heck is a protocol? Well, protocol defines a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. For example, here we have my YouTube channel. Say my YouTube channel is a protocol. Well, this protocol needs to have a name and a profile picture in order to be a YouTube channel might also need to have videos, but these are really the two requirements, the two main ones I can think of, but that's just protocol for you. Basically just provides a blueprint for us. And there's this protocol in Swift UI that's called, um, I think it might actually be in combine, which might be part of Swift UI, but this one is called observable object. And so what an observable object is, is it's a protocol that will send notifications to our Swift UI view, this content view that says hello world, which you could really say anything, but that observer is going to send notifications when that view needs to be updated. Because if you remember, these views are, ba are built off of structs. So that means they are copied rather than referenced. So whenever we make changes to them, we need to republish the views. And so that's another thing. We have something here that's called an at published. Now you might think, what does this at sign mean? The at sign is something called a property wrapper. So a property wrapper adds a layer of separation between the code that manages how a property is stored and how the code defines a property. Basically in fancy words, it's just a variable with code that kind of uses that variable. It does something with that variable. And so every time we declare a published variable, that's going to allow that variable to do something. And what that something is, I'm making a lot of reference to my YouTube channel, but this is the thing I think of when I see a published variable. A pub published variable is kind of like my YouTube channel. Whenever I make a video, you guys who are subscribed to me if you have those post notifications turned on, which you should, you will get a notification when I publish a video. And that's exactly what is happening with this publish variable. Whenever this variable changes from its initial value or any other value after, it's going to notify this observable object, which is inside the view we're going to build later. And once that view receives a notification from the observable object who is observing this published variable, then the view is going to update itself. All right, that's a lot to throw at you guys. I know you're probably super confused. Maybe you're not, but you're probably like, Evan, what is the purpose of the last four minutes of this video? Well, what you guys just learned is that basically we have these drum pads, right? This is a drum pad sampler. And so what happens is because we set up this published variable, whenever we press one of those pads, the view is going to update because whenever we press one of those pads, this property, which tells what the last played pad was, is going to change. 
and therefore it's going to notify our observable object, the drums conductor, and that drums conductor is going to notify the view to update, to refresh. And that's it. That's all this video was about. And also, this private set right there, I forgot to mention, that means that we just can't set this variable, this property, outside of this drums conductor class. So the scope of this class, it begins right here, and it ends right here. And so anywhere outside of here, like if we're accessing that class in here, or say in here, or anywhere else, we just can't set this value. We can get it, we can read the value, but we can't write that. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to leave a like if you did, and subscribe. Helps the channel grow. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.